Hello folks, welcome to the demonstration video number 14 of my eShop project. In this video, I'm gonna explain about the product updating process. So without further ado, let's get into this. As you can see, now I'm on our my products page. Now I'm gonna update details about this iPhone 12 listing. So I'm clicking this update button. Alright, now we are in our product updater page. On top of this page, you can see our family header section like this. Then on the bottom you can see a familiar footer section like this. You can see the title of this page here like this. It says product updater. You can see the category of our updating product like this. You can see the brand of our product here which is Apple. You can see the model of our product here as iPhone 12. You can see all of these places are grayed out. We are not letting sellers to update these three fields when updating. We can update our product title here on this field. You can see the condition of our product here as brand new. As you can see these two radio buttons are grayed out too. We are not letting sellers to update the condition of the product. You can see the color of our product here as Pacific Blue. This field is grayed out too because we are not letting sellers to update this. Then sellers can update the available quantity of their product from here. They can just type the numeric value on this field or they can use these arrows to update. You can see the price of a product unit here. This field is grayed out too because we are not letting sellers to update this along the way. Then sellers can update delivery charges using these two fields. They can update within Colombo delivery charge on this field. Then they can update out of Colombo delivery charge on this field. Then sellers can update product description on this field. Then from here they can update product images. You can see the current image of product here like this. When clicking on this button, it opens an explorer window to select new images to update. After all of those things, this button is here to update the product. Ok, now I'm gonna update all the details in these updatable fields to demonstrate you the updating process. As you can see, now I'm updating details like this. Ok, now let's click on this button to update. Alright, we are getting an alert as your product has been updated successfully. I'm gonna say ok for this. Now I am reloading this page to see if it is true or not. It is true, now our product details are updated like this. Now let's go to our my products page to confirm that further. Alright, you can see our updated details here like this. Ok, now we are certain that our product updating process is working perfectly. Now let's get into coding side of things. As you can see now I am going to VS code. We are currently inside our update product.php file. To keep this running in the state it should be I am linking some other files inside of it. First inside the head tags I am linking bootstrap.css, bootstrapicons.css then our own style.css file. Then by the end of the body tags I am linking bootstrap bundle.js file and our own script.js file. Then inside of this PHP script I am including our header part.php file. Then I am requiring our connection.php file to establish the connection with database. Then these session calls are checking out whether the user is signed in or not. Then these session calls are checking out whether product ID is in our session or not. Then by the bottom of this file, inside another PHP script, I am including our footer section.php file like this. If user wasn't signed in, this is redirecting them back to home page. If a product ID wasn't in the session, this is redirecting those users back to my products page. Now let's get into the codes of body section. You can see the codes of our product updater page title like this. Using search queries like this and codes like this inside of PHP scripts, we are getting product details from our database onto these input fields. After that I added IDs to the input fields that we are letting users to update. We are doing this to carry the data on input fields to the JavaScript side using the AJAX method. These are codes of product image updating section. 
then these are the codes of our actual image chooser. I added IDs like these to all three image fields. I added ID like this to image chooser too. We are doing this to carry image data using the Ajax method. I'm calling a JavaScript function name change product image from the select images to upload button. Then I called a JavaScript function name product update from this update product button. Okay, now let's go to our script.js file. You can see our change product image JavaScript function like this. Inside of that, we are grabbing the image chooser using the ID that we added. This on change is checking out whether we are selecting new image files to upload or not. These codes are getting the count of our selected image files. If count was low or equal than 3, these codes are creating temporary URLs aka temporary paths for those images. If more than 3 images were selected, this is giving you alert as please select 3 or less than 3 images. Then you can see our product update js function here. Inside of that we are grabbing input fields using the IDs like this. We are grabbing our image chooser like this too. Then I'm creating a new form data here like this. Then I'm appending those grabbed data to that form data. These codes are getting the count of our selected image files. Then these codes are appending all of those selected images to that form data. Then I'm creating a new XML HTTP request like this to request from product update process.php side. This already state change is here to figure out the current state of our request. If it was 4, this is alert in the response text which is coming from the product update process.php side. Then finally, we are sending our request to the product update process.php side using the post method from here. Okay, now let's see our product update process.php file. On top of this PHP script, I'm starting the session like this. Then I'm requiring our connection.php file to establish the connection with database. Then these session calls are checking out whether product ID is in our session or not. Then these codes are grabbing incoming input field data like this. Then this query is updating our database according to those incoming input field data. After updating the database, this is giving a response as the product has been updated successfully. These codes are getting the count of our selected image files. Then we are creating array of allowing image file extension types. Then this query is deleting the current image paths in our database. If 3 or less than 3 image files were selected, these codes are getting the image file type of those images. Then these codes are setting file extensions to image files according to their image file types. Then we are setting paths and names to images to save them like this. This is the image file path. Then we are setting file name like this. First product title. Then number of the selected image file. Then finally we are setting a unique ID to the name. The image file name ends with the file extension. These codes are moving image files from their temporary paths to their saving paths. This query is inserting those updated image paths to our database. If everything was successful, this is giving a response as success. If someone has selected the image file with the file type that we are not allowing, this is giving a response as file type is not allowed. If someone has selected more than 3 images to update, this is giving a response as invalid image count, please select 3 or less than 3 images to continue. So folks, that's all I have to explain in this video. Stay tuned for the next one. See ya.